Hello everyone and welcome to Adam Shar Weekly. In this video, I'm going to show you that how you can build a complete COVID-19 tracking application. The final product may look something like this. You can see that we have different states in US, Arkansas, Alabama, so on. And we have the total number of cases in those particular states, number of deaths and number of people that are hospitalized. Now, the first thing we need to find out is that, okay, where are we even getting all of this data? So I'm going to get all of this data from this URL, COVID tracking, and you can see that it does have all of this information. I'm not sure if this is completely up to date or not, but uh, anyways, we do have some sort of a JSON and that goes on forever for every single state with a lot of information. So we already have created a Swift UI app. It's a very basic app. You can see there's nothing much going on. The first thing that I want to do is I want to create some sort of a service, a client that is going to give me all the data. So I'm gonna go over here and create a new file. And I will just call it web service, uh, but you can call it HTTP client. Basically we're making a client so that it can make a request to uh, the actual JSON service and get us the results. So you can call it anything you want. I'm just gonna call it web service. Okay, so in that web service, we do have a function called get COVID tracking, tracking uh, result, I guess. I mean, you can call it over here. And it is, it's asynchronous, so it is going to fire a completion and it is going to give us something back. So what it is going to give us back is a array of tracking information, which we, by the way, don't have. There is no such thing as tracking. So we will have to implement that particular class. So let's go ahead and implement the tracking class. This will be our model, and we will be using the MVVM design pattern to implement all of those things. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new file, Swift file, and I will call it tracking. This is going to be our model. Now inside the tracking, I'm gonna go ahead and create a structure. So I'll call it tracking. And this is going to be decodable because data coming from a web service, JSON, has to map to the tracking, all right? And now we can go ahead and create certain properties. So one of those properties will be state, there we go. And the other one will be the total number of people affected, I guess, so that will be integer. Uh, we can also go ahead and say positive and negative. So positive cases, uh, a positive, basically cases that were positive for COVID-19, and death, how many deaths occurred, so that will be also integer, and how many people actually hospitalized. So if you want that information, you can definitely uh, use that information also. And since this information are hospitalized, sometimes we know and sometimes the data is not available, we can actually make it optional so that uh, we know that it is not there. Let's go ahead and first of all, build it. And looks like it built successfully. That's perfectly fine. Now, the next step that we want to do is we should go into our web service and make an actual call. So you can see that over here, we can make an actual call and uh, perform an actual request. So I'll start with getting the URL. We already discussed the URL. This is a URL that will give you all the data, which is right over here. You can see that. Okay, so once we get the URL, we can use URL session dot shared dot data task. And we're gonna use the one which takes in the URL and a completion handler. We already have the URL, so I'm just gonna pass in the URL. For the completion handler, this is going to return us a couple of different things. It's going to return us data, it's going to return us a response, and it is going to return us error. And make sure that you call resume on it, because if you don't call resume, guess what? Your request is never gonna go through. I'm gonna go over here and check that if the data is actually available and the error is equals to nil, if it is not, well, there's nothing much we can do. We can simply call the completion handler. I'm not sure what that is, but we can simply call the completion handler and we can pass in nil. If the data is not nil, then we can actually decode the data. So I'm just gonna call it over here, tracking list equals to try. And then I can say JSON decoder dot decode. 
And then when I'm decoding over here, I can actually pass in that what type of data that I'm decoding. So I can say tracking dot self and then data will be data. Now, if you don't really know anything about JSON decoder or decode, or you don't know about MVVM design pattern, I am going to add some other URLs in the YouTube description, which will be about JSON decoding in Swift 5 and also understanding what the MVVM design pattern is. So hopefully you'll watch that and you'll gain a better understanding of the design pattern. Okay, so there we go. So we have our get COVID tracking result. Now the question is who will be responsible for calling all of these different things? So who will be responsible for calling this particular model or this particular web service? And the answer is that we will have to create some sort of a view model. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a view model. This will be a Swift file, that's perfectly fine. And I will name this as tracking list view model. There we go. And the tracking list view model is going to be a class. And now you might be wondering, hold on a second, why are we not using a structure and why are we using a class? Well, the reason is that I do need to make sure that I am using observable object. Observable object basically means that I can publish an event from right inside this tracking list view model. So if I assign it to a particular property, which is marked with publish, it can publish an event which can be intercepted or subs it can be used by someone else. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a property called published, published. It will be var trackings equals to a tracking view model. Now this tracking view model is the actual view model that we are after. This is the one that gets displayed on the screen. Now we don't really have anything called tracking view model. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a separate class for tracking view model. So let's go ahead and create a separate class over here. And this will be a tracking view model. And I can go ahead and use this class and make sure that we import foundation. So import foundation. Okay, so we have tracking view model. The tracking view model, in order to create a tracking view model, you should use or you should pass in a tracking model. And you can see that the only initializer for the tracking view model takes in a tracking model. Then we simply assign the property tracking to the tracking model that you're passing and you are simply going to return whatever the items are for that particular model. Now, one thing that you will note over here is that we are not really setting any values to the tracking. We are simply using the values from the model and we are exposing it to the outside world, all right? Now, the benefit of using MVVM in this particular scenario is that this properties state total, positive, death, hospitalized, these will be the properties that will be visible on the screen. So, or they will be binded on to the elements on the screen. So if I want to customize something, if I want to say uppercase or anything like that, I can do that over here, all right? Okay, let's go back to our tracking, tracking list model, tra tracking list view model. And what we are going to do is we are going to implement a function called get tracking data. So I'm going to say get tracking data. All right. Now we already have a web service, so we can definitely use the web service. So web service dot get COVID tracking data. It is going to fire a completion handler, which we can use a trailing closure and we can get a tracking list in and we, we will go ahead and first of all we will go ahead and unwrap the tracking list so tracking list tracking list and now we can actually go ahead and dispatch the queue so dispatch queue dot main dot async and the reason we are dispatching the queue is that we want to assign the trackings property this property right here we are assigning it and since this property is marked with publish this should only be assigned on the main thread and now we can say tracking list dot map. I can go over all the list and I can call tracking 
view model. So I can say tracking view model dot init. So this particular function, basically we're calling the initializer. And what we're doing with the initializer is that when we are iterating through the tracking list, we will get hold of the tracking object, like the actual tracking object, which is based on this class, which is our structure tracking. And we get that object and we simply pass that object to the tracking view model dot init, basically to the constructor or initializer for tracking view model, which you can see over here, right over here. There we go. And that is how your view model gets initialized. Now the remaining portion is that how do we get this to be displayed on the screen? That's the, that's the main thing, right? So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna to go to my content view. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a observed property. So I'm gonna say observed object private var tracking list view model equals to tracking list view model. So we have simply initialized the tracking list view model. And when this particular page is actually loaded, so we can then go ahead and call the actual function, which is get tracking data. Now get tracking data is eventually going to call this function, which is get tracking data. And it's going to go and you know, get the data and assign it to the trackings property. Once it is assigned to the trackings property, since the trackings property is marked with publish, it is going to throw an event, which we can handle over here. The body is rendered again because of that, and we can create our user interface, all right? Now I'm gonna create a very simple user interface. I'm not gonna go into details of how you can create a very complicated interface or anything like that. So we're just gonna go ahead and see if we can create a very simple interface. So I'm gonna go ahead and use a navigation view, which is going to allow us to create a navigation bar. So I'm gonna say navigation bar title, and I'm gonna say, let's say COVID-19 tracking. And inside over here, I can actually go ahead and use a list. So I can say self dot tracking list view model dot trackings and the ID that we are going to use will be the ID property for which is available in the tracking view model, which is right over here. And inside the list, I can actually go ahead and display something. So there are many different ways of displaying that. Um, to starting out, I guess, I can go ahead and maybe create a H stack. And inside the H stack, I can say maybe a tracking well, we have to give it a name. So tracking in tracking dot state. All right. Um, let's go ahead and run this and see that if it at least populates the state or not, or do we have to do some other stuff to get the states to be displayed? Okay, so you can see that all the states are there. They are getting displayed, right? That's pretty cool. I mean, the UI is completely up to you. I mean, we can actually go ahead and say a little bit of a padding if you want to. You can go ahead and change the foreground color to color dot white. Now it might not be visible. And we can actually go ahead and change the background color. I can say background color to be like purple or something. So we do have a background color. We can even go ahead and say clip shape and I can clip out a circle, all right? And I can even get the fonts and everything working and this is all inside a horizontal stack, which means that currently it's displaying one item of the stack, but if I want to, I can also display other things in the stack. So I'm gonna go ahead and say spacer. And if I want to display something else, let's see what other properties are available to us. So a state is good, total. Let's go ahead and display total. So if I want to display total, I can maybe go over here and say tracking dot total all right let's go ahead and run this and we got the total all right if you don't like it to be over there uh, you can put another spacer over there or you can have like sort of a little bit more padding so but we have the total being displayed also all right and this is completely up to you that what exactly are things that you want to display i mean if you want the next item or in this case which is uh, text to be inside a vertical item, so I can actually put it inside 
a vertical stack, which is this one. There we go. And inside the vertical stack, if I want a horizontal stack, and inside the horizontal stack, maybe I want to display something else. So what is the other thing? Uh, positive cases or deaths or something? So let's say death. So we can maybe display death, which are 10. And the other part was, I believe, hospitalized or something. So the, the UI is completely up to you, whatever you want. So let's say hospitalized. How many people were hospitalized? Uh, zero in uh, Arkansas, I guess, but 1,719 in Alabama. If you also do want to create some sort of an icon, I believe you can insert it over here. Sometimes I just don't remember what the actual key is, but I believe it is function, control, command, space, and I can put uh, the icon for that over here. Uh, oh, that's the wrong place. So this is not the that icon. This is it. So now we can see that this is the one and I can actually enter another one for hospital. These are the people who are hospitalized, but this is completely up to you. I mean, the main thing is to getting the data. Now, obviously you can change the font and all that stuff. All right, so hopefully you have learned uh, that how you can create MVVM design pattern and how you can consume JSON and then display it on the screen. And you, you saw that it's very, very quick and very easy to do when you are using Surf UI with MVVM design pattern. I, I really hope that you have liked this video. Make sure that you check out the YouTube description because it does have a link to my article which I have written about this. It also has a link to the JSON, uh, the actual service that we are using, the JSON service, which is this one, the actual JSON. Uh, and I will also add some links if you want to read more about MVVM design pattern, then you can do that. If you like this video and want to support my channel, then the best way would be to check out my courses on Udemy. I have many different courses on Udemy, including Surf UI, Decorative Interfaces for Any Apple Device. This is a 16 plus hour course, and I always keep on updating this course uh, so that I can, whatever I learn, I just try to add this to, to the course. You can see it has uh, close to now 4,000 students with 891 ratings. So if you're looking to learn Surf UI, this is the complete course. And as you can see, this is also the best selling course. Now, Surf UI, if you're learning, you should definitely learn about the MVVM design pattern. And if you want to dig deeper into MVVM design pattern, I do have a course for you. It's called MVVM design pattern using Swift in iOS. This is also a best selling course, as you can see, with close to uh, 12,500 or plus 13,000, let's say, students enroll. And this is where you will learn everything about MVVM design pattern but using the UI kit framework. All right, keep that in mind. And the last one is the complete guide to JSON parsing. This is one of those things that every time I go to a job or every job that I've ever had, one of the things that you will always be doing is JSON parsing, whether it is your internal client or it is your external JSON third party coming, you will always be parsing JSON using Swift. So this is an excellent course because it covers many different ways of parsing JSON. Now, the best way to get all of these courses is to check out the YouTube description. I have links to all of those courses in the YouTube description, and I would be very, very happy if you use those links, because if you use those links, those are referral links, uh, then it will uh, give me a little bit of a higher revenue. Uh, thank you so much, and I really hope that you have enjoyed this video.